Hey everyone, just a bit of a warning. Throughout the recording of this video, we are going to be talking about some pretty heavy topics regarding sexual assault. Yeah, just general um, sex abuse and violence are going to be topics that come up in this review because of the nature of the film. So if any of those things are things that you're particularly sensitive to or don't feel like you can, you know, hear discussion about them for your own reasons, uh, this is probably not the video mm -hmm. to, to watch. Just, you know, sort of viewer discretion is advised. Mm -hmm. And if you are the victim of any of these crimes, please seek out help, go to a trusted source. But yeah, just fair warning, we're going to move into the review now. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Million Dollar Media. I am your host, Max Callahalls, and with me today we have... David. And Adrian. And we are going to be covering Season 4 of The Boys. The penultimate season, I guess now we can officially say. Like, there's one more season after this, and then the show is done. Yep, I think so. Yeah, so... Really just another season about them trying to figure out ways to kill both Homelander and Victoria Newman. That's the big goal this season, to kill Newman. And various shenanigans ensues and various characters go on their um, respective arcs. Um, I'm just going to say I really like this season. It's not my favorite season. I still think season three is probably my favorite season of them all. But I really enjoyed this season. I thought it had really good episodes in the middle, but I will say that there were some moments where I was like, okay, I feel like we're kind of being a little repetitive here. <laughs> what are your guys' thoughts on this season? Very political. I mean, the show's always been political. I know, but regarding my terrible memory of like the previous seasons, mm -hmm. and I guess because of uh, current events, too. That, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> the potential election coming up and all this, all this stuff in the show, uh -huh. I'm like, fuck. Yeah, the, yeah. Packing real world, hella fast, mm -hmm. hella hard. Now, for me, what I liked about it is that it kind of shows like how crazy actual real world stuff is. Like, yeah, and then like, yeah, mixing that and then like with superhero stuff. Uh huh. In my, in my head, <laughs> it really doesn't make a difference. No, it doesn't. It's just it, like it's the equivalent of having a celebrity say, "This is my political view." Yeah, or they, a celebrity do some really heinous shit, or for that matter, a political, like a, a, a senator or, hell, a presidential candidate. <laughs> hey, look at my Epstein Island. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so for me, when everybody says like, oh, this show is getting way too political, I think it's showing politics that you guys don't this, agree with. Yeah, because I want to say, like in the earlier seasons, yeah, it wasn't focused as much. Well... But I feel like in the earlier seasons, it was more focused on, like, the Hollywood side of things. Yeah. That, because that that's, great. yeah, they're more, like, they're more celebrities and, like, sports players. Or like, they, they're they drafted into different areas, like uh, football or baseball, for that matter. And then they're also treated like celebrities. They're doing movies and stuff. But then once they started to get into actual, like, politics. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck did I get myself into? But, like, real life. I felt like this is like season four of the show. So it's not like all of a sudden they're throwing this at us. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I feel like it was a bit too much this time. Um, I don't know, because the whole show has been setting up this idea of like, they're going like Homelander wants to take over. And he the only way he really can show any like real power in things is if he like goes after actual political seats. I mean, I'm not opposed to. The political side, because it actually drove the plot in general mm -hmm. and really gave it purpose. Like, okay, yeah, you have Starlighters versus Homelander. Yeah. Like, from the very start of the show, I was like, oh, that, like, that drove basically everyone's motive on mm -hmm. Starlighters. Yeah. And then, then you get your, like, individual arcs from the Homelander side and what they went through is like, and then they get their own, they, like, the really own thought process. Like, I don't agree with the other side. I'm just against with what my side's saying. Yeah, or, exactly. <laughs> so I'm like, this is, this is okay. This is good. Because usually you said, oh, I'm switching sides. No, it's, no, I stand on my own boat and I'm going to die on it. Mm -hmm. Characters like Butcher, like, I really don't think he cares much about what Starlighters say or, like, that's political spectrum of things. He just fucking hate soups yeah he just doesn't care yeah no he, he just he, like scorched if like that's that's his whole goal 
But David, you you haven't spoken about your thoughts on this overall season yet. Compared to the other three, I think the this one was probably like the weakest. Like all the way through, or just like um, I'll be honest, they took way too long to get to the point of the ending. It took way too long. I I feel like it dragged off a bit. Like they did too many episodes. Well, not too many, but they took too long for Huey's dad. Like it was his part. Mm. They should have just got to the point faster i can see what you're saying like yeah i can see it because like we do go back to just simon peg chilling in a bed (laughs) for a while and like not much is going on and then when something does happen it's just one episode and they kind of resolve it at the end so i mean yeah that's one of the reasons why so it's not just because it's a little bit too too political i mean it, it was a little bit too much political this season but that wasn't the worst part. The worst part was just dragged on. Well, I don't know. Like, I'll give you the the pacing issues were a bit off for me as well. I'll give you that. But for the political side of things, I felt like this show has always been taking the piss out of certain viewpoints and stuff. And I just think that like this was the season that they're like, we're not gonna pussyfoot around. We're actually gonna go after and say what we believe and like show. We're going to represent things in the show that are actually happening in our real world and showing that yeah just because they're in this uh situation of just superheroes involved doesn't mean that this shit doesn't happen in real life just going back to the show per se and less about like the political side of things like i love butcher in this season just because for the most part it's a different side of him that like we didn't get to see in the first three seasons like it's a butcher that's actually trying to be the good person and like do the right thing and everything like that but like what i love about the finale is like all of it is just eventually for naught and like he just has to basically let the devil out. <laughs> yeah, he basically said, Fuck this shit, I'm just gonna burn everything. Yeah, I I like that because it's like in most shows we get a character to that point kind of too quick in my opinion. Where it's just like they're all just like, Fuck it, I'm done. Like it's too hard, we're just gonna do I'm just gonna do it the way that's be easiest and might be better for everybody. But in this show, like, I like that he takes the time to actually, like, do the right thing. Like, I think the funniest thing in the first episode of this show was when he's about to give Newman her the ransom they have on her. And all he sends her is a picture of his t- of a taint. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think that was so fucking funny. Yeah, I had to take a double take on that scene because I was like, I looked away for a second after it popped up. I'm like, what the fuck was that? So I yeah. rewind and I just see ass i'm like oh i think my favorite part is that there was such like a like conundrum online of people being like was that actually carl urban's taint <laughs> and apparently was no they came out and said no nah, it was it was a paid actor <laughs> like a paid performer or something like that but it was not carl urban's taint <laughs> oh yeah i know right Boo. <laughs> uh what do you guys have to say about butcher overall i love I, I'm right with you with like um, his kick dark, seeing the, I guess literally seeing the angel and devil on his shoulder. Yeah, that it's pretty much that. <laughs> and then it ends up being he's just seeing shit because of the V. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh my god, this is awesome! I'm so happy on how this show balanced every character's arc. Yeah, and then going to a week butchers of. It, it was just good all the way till its end, mm-hmm. and like, like the build up to that final decision. Yeah. Oh, but yeah. I don't know really what else to say besides it's just perfectly paced, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. So I thought the only pacing issues I had with was like with certain characters like Frenchie and Kamiko, where I feel like every season, ever since like past season two, maybe three, maybe a little bit of three. They've been having a real tough time of, like, what are we doing with Frenchie and Kamiko here? Especially this season. Kamiko especially. Like, her entire arc with her, like, going to find, like, that one girl who has the scar on her face. That really just kind of goes nowhere. Except for, like, one moment in the final scene of the show. But because it's just like, okay, like, that character never shows up past episode four. It's just like she, she gets seen, they have a fight, and then that's it. Yeah, I was disappointed. I wanted to see more of that, or at least see it end. Up there. Mm-hmm. Based on how how it ended this season, mm-hmm. I don't. I really don't want to see them take a side arc for that. I don't either, unless 
they pull up the whole angle of like those people that Kamiko was originally with were like a ter- terrorists and seeing how well, like at the end of this show pretty much all of America is just like a unsafe <laughs> for our main characters. I could see them possibly teaming up with them. Uh, no, I just have a question. What was the cult's name again? Do you remember? Shining Light. Yeah, Shining Light. And apparently Shining Light's a Filipino <laughs> group. Oh, it is? <laughs> I don't know. I saw it on TikTok. I'm like, no fucking way. And I just didn't want to go back and see what it was. Or like, what That's language hilarious. It I didn't recognize you. Oh, look or not. I did not. It, I think it is because I have I watch my show with like subtitles on. And when we go back in those flashbacks, it says, speaking in Tagalog. Oh my god, they are Filipino. Oh, like, ooh. <laughs> I never noticed. Depending on how they treat that subplot in the next season, like, I do think kind of like how in the third season they had to team up with the Russians to go and free Soldier Boy. I do think it's a possibility that they might team up with Shining Light next season. So Filipinos may be the ones to save America. Or ruin it. I okay. <laughs> I'm not gonna. We're not gonna go there. And one of the two. You're Filipino. How can you say that? <laughs> I'm speaking in a media standpoint. All right. Okay. <laughs> what What could possibly happen to show? Well, technically, there's three. Either they're the good guys, the bad guys, or somehow neutral. I don't know. I think that could be an interesting way to kind of pick up this hanging plot thread that's left at at the end of this season. But other than that, like, I don't really give a shit about what happened with Frenchie. <laughs> I don't care. I, his redemption yeah, arc. I don't, I don't care about Frenchie. I like Frenchie as a character, and I love his relationship with Kamiko. I just think it was just a really weird, like... Okay, I'll say this. That character's always been pansexual, in my opinion. How did it get in my ass? Yeah, well, that... And there's, like, moments in, like, the second season where, like, he's talking about transgender strippers... I don't know, there's always been certain moments where, like, he's just been very, I don't want to say, flamboyant's not the right word, but I just notice like, certain things where I'm like, he seems more open in who he would want to fuck. <laughs> so when people were saying, like, Frenchie's gay, I'm like, that was kind of obvious to me. <laughs> yeah, but the guy that he trolls uh, just felt like nothing, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you that, like, I didn't really feel much, like, chemistry-wise they, between they, the two. They, they should have they tried better. Much better. It felt forced. And they oh, want to introduce okay. Pierre Little. But he was literally there for a Frenchy plot development, and it really meant nothing in the end. Yeah, his ultimate like plot thread at the end, or like a, where his arc goes, of just like, oh, I'm gonna put myself in prison and pay for. I won the war. Yeah, and you know, pay for the sins that I have committed, and then ultimately like, eh, I I busted him out of jail. <laughs> it was like it meant nothing that he was forced out. Yeah, if he went. I persuaded maybe it would have been a little better but no he just got forced out now his entire arc is this doesn't matter yeah I, I that was a little weird for me i didn't like that element of just like how him like paying for his sins and you know ignoring kamiko ultimately just kind of gets resolved by just an off-screen thing just because we know butcher can you know get anything he wants pretty much other than that like I like Mother's Milk trying to, like, be the leader, actually. And for the most part, I think he's a pretty good leader because he knows when he's wrong. He also will not back down from people telling him otherwise. Like, that's a really good sign of a leader. Just someone who was committed to what they believe in. And for the most part, he he got stuff done. Like, especially when they infiltrated, like, Tech Knight's house. Uh, Here he got molested. Okay, well, hold on. <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, oh, oh. We got a couple other characters to get through first before we just yeah, yeah. unload on that. Oh, wait. Yeah, unload, yeah. Oh, we'll unload it, all right. Yeah, Um. all right, hold on. Uh, yeah, I like Mother's Milk in this season, even though like he looks very different. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's the first thing I noticed when I saw him. I was like, is this a new actor? He just leaned out shaved his face and like he just looks like a completely new person but still has like the old like mother's mm kind of like attitude so it's just like some this just feels weird (laughs) for i guess we get to talk about starlight i really i think this might be my favorite starlight stuff out of the whole series all the things they put this character through this season and that she is not this quote-unquote little angel kind of character just like oh she has nothing wrong with her she is the perfect person 
Like, admittedly, what she did to Firecracker is really fucked up. <laughs> I mean, hey, it happens. It's real. Yeah. As guys, I don't, we don't understand it, but, like, holy fuck. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, damn. This girl's vicious as hell. I mean, if you just look at the way guys treat each other, like, the way women treat each other, you can tell there's a clear difference. Oh, okay. I'll give you that, then. <laughs> yeah, the guys are joking. Um, But no, like, when all of her, like, very personal stuff gets released to the public and how people just flip on her, like, I felt really bad for her. I was just like, oh, man, like, that's fucked that that's just, that shit just kind of got released into the public in the way that it did on the particular news station that it did. I wasn't surprised. I was shocked that, like, nothing in the show has ever hinted to that happening, but that's one of the off-screen stuff that I'm okay with, where it's just like, well, we don't really need to, like, see them go through that. And, like, I feel like it being a surprise to the audience made it work better in the show. Yeah. <laughs> and then just Firecracker just saying everything that she ever did. Oh, you had an abortion. You got pregnant. You were sucking judges' dicks off. I'm like, holy fuck. All right. Well, we'll get into Firecracker in a bit, but we do have to talk about Huey. <laughs> oh, the absolute torture. This season. Yeah, he had the worst this season. Oh, he got he got real bad this season in more ways than one. Oof. Like, first of all, his mom comes back after God knows how long. That's fucked up for him. And it may be the only thing in this show that actually got patched up in the end for him. But shortly after, his dad dies. Yep. Welcome to the club, Huey. <laughs> and then, like, the Damn. next day after that, <laughs> he gets... Well, okay, maybe we shouldn't laugh about this because this is one of those things in the show where it's just like, I don't hey. know if this is meant to be funny or if this is meant to be, like, serious, but then he gets pretty much molested by Tech Knight. <laughs> hey, hey, we'll just put subtitles laughing uncomfortably. Yeah. I uh, uh, and, and just like real life, no one cared at the end. Yeah, yeah, that's, okay, I'll give you that. That is one problem that I have with this show is just how quick... They are to be like, he's fine. I'm not fine. Hold on. In a show that is very critical of sexual assault, like, the fact that they don't, like, take a minute to actually, like, talk about this and actually check up on him is really kind of hypocritical, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, I, I, I know people who, who suffered that. They just shaked it off like nothing. Well, I, I do think that at least then you should at least address that because they don't do anything about it. They just say, oh, well, if no one does anything in real life, I doubt they're going to care for a show. Well, I then that's a problem with the show. Then I think that they should at least address in the next season or in something, at least come out and acknowledge like, hey, we fucked up. We we thought this would be funny. It wasn't funny. Funny because that scene literally had the actors questioning whether <laughs> they should do it or Exactly. <laughs> but... And to your point of, like, she should have talked about it more, I think even if they did, that right there would be one too many plot points. If they made that the focus right after that happened, you're taking the attention away from everything else. Okay, then here's what you could do then. Well, once in past tense, you could have at least get gotten rid of some of the side characters' arcs then. Or in the next season... We just address it, which I think is mu probably going to happen. I think it would be a good idea to kind of like focus on all the th the shit that Huey has gone through. Because keep in mind, oh, yeah. like he is the main character, or well, he's one of the main characters of the show. It's him, Butcher, and Annie, in my opinion. Are we just going to talk about it now? Yeah. What okay, the uh, fuck? <laughs> sure. Was he there with Web Weaver when they were getting the suit? I think it was Mother's Milk. I no, thought it no. was just Mother's Milk. And then when they were in that, like, halfway... Not halfway house. That, like, Wasn't safe it? house well, next to, like, Tech remember. Knight's place. That's when they put the suit on. Okay. Okay, I just want to make sure. Because if he was there to witness that, I feel like he'd just say no on the spot. Mm -hmm. Of the person he had to literally mimic. Which he did. And then... When he said, do the web weaver voice, I'm like, this sounds nothing like him. It just sounds like Huey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was about and to then, say, like, for all the deducting that, like, Tech Knight pow hit power has, like, I'm, it took a pretty long time for him to realize this isn't Web Weaver. <laughs> yeah, with the super senses, 
Yeah. Like, you no, know, or do you just never met Web Weaver before? Mm-hmm. You're probably never met him. Well, I don't know. Maybe he just found out like this guy got an extra hole. <laughs> I mean, he pretty much smells like him with the suit, so I guess that was I enough. I guess, but that was oh, more oh, meant. Th- that was more meant for uh, what's his name, uh, Homelander, because there was that scene earlier in the season where. Like a drop of sweat gets on Homelander and he just fr- flips out and he's like, Campbell. <laughs> I'm thinking, can Homelander, f- ha- doesn't he have super hearing? Yeah, okay, that's one thing in this show that I'm always just like, okay, does he have it now or does he not have it? Because the character is literally right above him. There's no way that he doesn't hear him. <laughs> okay, we'll get to that. Man sh- webbed on a cake. <laughs> yeah. Double cake. Don't make me have to look up clips for this. <laughs> oh, that's too late. That that was the scene I had to skip. I don't know why that was, but I just could not handle that. And then, like, he got tied up. He got molested. He got tickled. Yeah. He got everything this season. Yeah. Well, got the special treatment that, honestly, I wouldn't wish on anyone. Yeah, no, I would not wish this upon anybody. And everything he experienced was was played off like nothing happened keep in mind after this all happens his girlfriend gets like replaced by a shapeshifter which is already like the most violating thing because apparently like they fucked a bunch of times so already he's just being used yeah no and then like her the shapeshifter or they uh propose to huey and basically rob him of that moment like that's fucked up that's like an emo- like you cannot recover from that <laughs> to have like everybody not give a shit about like hey Huey in this situation you also got violated too now to be fair I'm not saying that like Star- uh, Starlight was at fault for her being upset because you have to imagine you are kidnapped and forced in a ca- like in chains for 10 days of this person just emotionally damaging you and then all of that to be kind of been proven true I can get why she's upset of, like, why didn't you realize it was me right away? Like, I can understand, especially, like, this is the scene right after them killing the shapeshifter. I can see why they're both upset and why Huey is just trying to play it like, hey, like, I didn't know it was you and her not buying it. Like, I can see why that's the case. Hey. Yeah, but it really wasn't his fault. I don't think it's anybody's fault in that scenario except for the shapeshifter. No, I'm yeah, partially, but, she, but as I'm, usual, she's blamed them. Starlight. I am partially blaming Starlight. If her powers were actually working and not being in a freaking an emotional block, would have freaking roasted that shapeshifter and we wouldn't have this problem. I'm partially blaming her. I'm not going to blame her. Also, freaking the shapeshifter had all her memories and everything, just not, you know, the shapeshifter's certain habits. Yeah. That's hard to, you know, hard to uh, tell. Mm-hmm. Even though he said he did. Oh, he to his, to his credit, he figured it out at a pretty good moment. He did, but like that's your big tell out of the what three or four he said. Yeah, I like how for like such a unrealistic scenario, how realistic the argument and both of their points of view was. I wouldn't say it's terrible, but like he's getting touched up pretty fast. He, oh yeah, like. At least in- I don't know like again I think it's just like one of those things like we had this thing happen at the end of the season we have to wrap it up pretty quick that means any emotional damage that may have come from that has to be wrapped up pretty quick too and it gets pretty much wrapped up in one line where she's like you have to get tested for every disease imaginable and that's her showing we're gonna move on from this which honestly shows a pretty healthy like like couple standings where it's like look we just we have our argument we need a little time we got more important things to do but in the meantime just know that i still love you like that's what i like about the show is that characters have realistic like relationships with each other and what i mean by realistic some good some really bad (laughs) at least like huey at least for huey he'll never experience that anal experience with the shapeshifter that he apparently had a heavenly experience with ever again. Okay, did he get uh-huh. fucked in the ass or did he put two fingers in her ass? I think I think she put her fingers in his ass. No, I think he fucked her in the ass. 
You know, out of the 20 or so times, probably all are of option. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they never you know? they never make it clear. <laughs> Let's just say all of the above. Yeah. For Huey, but for also bad. Yeah. Okay, do you want to get into the villains now? And which ones do you want to start with? Is A-Train considered a villain? Not eh. anymore. Not anymore. Which I did like his arc no. in this season. I think he had like the yeah. best redemption arc. Which is crazy for the fact that he is the reason why all this shit is happening. If I had to pick the only thing I really liked about this season was his redemption arc. I thought it was really well handled and I felt like it was interesting getting to see like Mother's Milk and A-Train have a scene together. Mostly because it's just like, huh, I guess these two characters would kind of have some sense of like understanding. <laughs> Be careful there, Max. I am. I am. <laughs> But no, I, but I, I, you know what I mean. Like the the show is like, hey, they meet up, and even the show acknowledges, like, look, we're the two black people on these teams. We gotta look out for each other. No, besides, you know, just being black, that's not the only reason. <laughs> uh, the reason why I'm saying is they both feel like they're like, you know, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. But bottom line, I like A Train's arc in this season, and I do like seeing both MM and A Train have scenes together. Also, just because I don't think throughout this show they have had a, see- a scene together, so it was an interesting like dynamic to see those two together. I think A Train's really the only, the only, I guess, quote, I guess, <sighs> hero now that actually defines a true hero. Mm hmm. When he saved uh, Mother's Milk, and then he saw the kid staring at him, it's mm-hmm. like, no cameras, no nothing, just a kid smiling. It's like, no recognition, no, like, he felt like a real hero. Yeah. And the moment I was like, this arc is perfect. And like, the true definition of a hero. It's, yeah. And then what he did for the rest of that uh, just was really well done. Yeah, I wonder what they're gonna do with him in the second, in the the final season. I mean, they can, it's only two options: either they ended it with season four and he just disappears, or he comes back. But then, if he comes back, does he make it to the end, or does he get killed? Exactly, he'll probably get killed. I wouldn't mind if, like, he makes like a heroic sacrifice. Hell, he might be the reason why they escape. I mean, yeah, that, I mean, I, that's a full circle ending if I've ever heard one. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a cool way to end the see that end his character off, like him saving Huey. Well, I mean, he already did that this season, so he's kind of already. We'll see. We'll see. But um, I guess the two other characters I kind of want to talk about before we get into like the main guy. I really like both Sister Sage and Firecracker in this season. Just these two characters. I love the dynamic they play. Like, even though one is like a complete dumb hick pretty much her manipulative ways of not only how she gets in the head of like starlight but also in the head of homelander is pretty entertaining <laughs> oh yeah yep. i laughed my ass off when she <laughs> squirted milk that scene is such a great gift i love it I love his reaction, this the like the shock and then the realization of like <clears throat> my favorite. <laughs> oh dude, it made me laugh so hard. <laughs> Cause I was like, oh god, where is this scene going? Because this was the same episode as the Tech Night episode. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm done with all this weird sex shit. And then that be the thing that happens. I was like, I laughed my ass off. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. But yeah, did any of you guys have anything else to say about like Firecracker? I mean, I'm pretty sure she only acts like a fucking redneck. Really? Um, I guess she said that because she acts like that because there's the only way for her to get views. Oh, and yeah. And I guess yeah, yeah. control okay. the people. Yeah, like, do you actually believe any of this shit? She's like, no, but what do you want to be told? Like, you're in a holy war fight? Or do you want to be told that you're a loser that's not going to have anything else in life? Like, of course, like them breaking down half the Internet in one line is really funny to me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> OK, before we get into Homelander, uh, we do have to say, like, uh, I think the, my like one of the, my favorite character introductions was Sister Sage this season. She was badass. 
intelligent, funny, and ultimately she proved herself as the smartest person in the world. Yep. Yeah. I mean, she knew everything that was happening around her. Mm -hmm. We just heard not say anything just so her plan could continue. Mm -hmm. So it's literally, she's pulling the strings and adapting accordingly. Mm -hmm. And I love her reasoning for it at the end. It's just like, I don't give a shit about your plan. I just wanted to see if I could do it. I was like, that's terrifying. (laughs) It's like the Joker. Like, like it's like a dog chasing cars you just don't know what you're gonna do when you actually get it no i love that about her character and i also find her like <laughs> having to lobotomize herself just a fucking deep did i uh that, that like lobotomy like things like that i can't i had to skip that one that i had to, i got uh, i'm used it. to gore so that was what i had to watch i got through it barely because of her like <laughs> one him saying like i think this is a bit weird i don't like the idea he's like i'll let you ass fuck me to the kim and ray j video <laughs> and him instantly folding up like okay so how do i do this <laughs> dude, that was hilarious dude he does such a good job at his comedic timing dude i saw a video of someone that like a uh, meet with him they gave him an octopus <laughs> <laughs> They gave him like a plushy <laughs> octopus. I'm like, oh boy. Oh, yeah, like a squishmallow? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's hilarious. Oh, yeah. He killed this octopus. I forget. Yeah, dude. Yeah. That scene was so funny. He played it so well, too. <laughs> and the octopus was like, <laughs> yeah. I think my favorite part about that scene where the octopus, his, his octopus girlfriend dies, I can't believe I just said that, is where, like, he plays it like it was an actual human being. There's no hint of, like, I'm joking in this scene. This is like, oh, no, I'm actually upset that my octopus just died. <laughs> and it made me laugh because they play it so deadpan seriously. And meanwhile, the octopus is just dying. <laughs> dying like, <laughs> <"Ugh."> <laughs> and, like, three times before she perished. I'm like, come on. Oh, dude. Hey, the, the Stalin. And then the... <laughs> the, the <laughs> at the end of the episode where, like, him and... Black Noir, the new Black Noir, I should say. I just walking down the hall, just going like, bro, bro, bro. And then Sage passes by, and then Noir just goes like, but I thought you loved me. Wait, <laughs> and, wait, yeah, and you love Adam too? <laughs> I love Black Noir being like, fucking what? <laughs> Dude, I, I love Noir. He was great. I love that. This cunt's narcoleptic. Bro, the fact that he was real life narcoleptic. <laughs> and they've kept those scenes in the show fucking amazing you know uh-huh. i love the part where like he's falling asleep at the desk and they just have to kick the chair and he goes <gasps> <laughs> yeah there's like a quick scene where you can see him in the chair sleeping but he, he's not really focused the scene's not focused on him at that second so you just see him slouched in the chair <laughs> like, now is this the Black Noir, just like in the comics, that has superpowers? Because he can fly. Well, we see him unmasked, so it's not the Homelander clone. Oh, yeah, but... But, like, how? I mean, he can fly, but what's his powers? I That's think he I just know. has, like, general... <laughs> I don't know. I guess he just has, <laughs> like, <laughs> super strength, endurance, and yada, 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 plus flight. And narcoleptic. Okay. And narcoleptic. Yep. I don't know. Yeah. Maybe I guess I. I'm glad they're not doing that clone thing from the comic. Yeah, I guess because in the comics, it made the clone made it Homelander look like an ass. That's it. Well, it kind of took away a lot of like the agency from that character, like all the things that he's done. Well, that actually wasn't the one we were we've been following this entire time. It's actually this other guy that we who's been in the background. Like I think that's dumb, but that's just me. But if we want to get into Homelander, I think now we should. I, dude, fucking Anthony Starr. He's, he's perfect. He, he's great. He's up there, like top villain actors all time. Mm-hmm. Like he is just so terrifying, funny, and if even in this season, you you see where he's coming from. At one particular moment, with him going back to his original like laboratory. <laughs> that scene <laughs> that scene is nuts come on yeah yeah put your back into it <laughs> oh man. i saw that i saw someone made a gif of that scene 
of that guy jacking off and then the scene of him getting milk in his face. <laughs> I seen that too. <laughs> no, man, that's that's fucked. But yeah, him... I found it on Instagram. <laughs> I will say it to you guys later. Thanks. I'm afraid to put that in this video. <laughs> yeah, there's worse things on the internet. Yeah. That's the one time in this series, in this entire series, you kind of are on Homelander's side of like, yeah, waste these people. Yeah, you laughed at me, you toyed with me, you constantly tested me. Mm-hmm. You, you put me in a freaking uh, German oven. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, that whole like setup of that episode was just so tense. Like him put, bringing the fudgy the whale, like that was just unsettling of just like hey yeah yeah bring some forks bring some plates come on let's all have fun here yeah that, that's so scary like with any like psychopath is just smiling and just being friendly and you know he's gonna waste you yeah like they there's nowhere them for them to run there's one exit and he can just take it out like nothing like bro bro they he said come on laugh or like clap while he's jerking it I'm like holy fuck I, Dude, I also like he tries, like, well, I mean, at least he tries to give his son a better treatment than he what, what he received. Yeah, but there's also the problem he has with his relationship with his quote-unquote son. But how he tries to enforce his beliefs on his son, which I think is just bad parenting overall. Parents, Not... you know, tend to force their beliefs onto their children. Yeah, that's just parenting. Yeah. I don't think it's good parenting, though. <laughs> I well, mean, people do it different ways. Oh, yeah. Okay. There's different ways between, like, hey, don't kill someone. That's forcing a belief on someone, but it's a good belief. And then there's the idea of, like, hey, we can save people, but you can do it in a way of just forcing another person to hurt another person. But otherwise, I will say, I do like Ryan's arc in this show, where it's just like, you never really know if he's going to be on the right side. <laughs> kind of going back to what the scene we just talked about uh-huh. Ryan's arc. It kind of confused me a bit when he was smiling when she was slapping him. But then the, the next arc we see, he's going a lot more butcher side. When we clearly saw a near full dip into Homelander. That's that fair. Just, that yeah. just confused me a little bit. Yeah, like, I could see what you mean. Because you just showed heavy on this one, but then he's like steadily going out of it. At that moment, choose one. Place. I get what you mean. I guess it was more like like Homelander was trying to use that part of uh, Ryan that wants to do good and manipulate it in a way that makes him it more towards what Homelander wants of like, these people are beneath us. So we need to treat them. Like if you want to do good, this is how you do it. You make them eat. I can see what much, you mean. They pretty much eat each other, which I think is the manipulative bad side of parenting. of just like, Hey, my son wants to do good in the world. Let's manipulate that in, into what, I think is the better way of doing things and how I want it done and not how he wants it done. And then like, well, I, I also think there's a scene where him and butcher talk to each other after that, or at least have like an interaction where like he shows them a picture of butcher and his wife. And like, Hey, uh, yeah. that was a fam- happy like, family back then. Yeah. When they were in like the kitchen, right? Or yeah. Like that, that too. The cookie scene. Yeah. But then that just kind of gets all wiped away with Grace Mallory. <laughs> yeah. Which I think that was just way too rushed on her part. But I kind of understand what she was going for. But I'm also like, I feel like we could have handled this in a better way. <laughs> yeah, if she was going to do that, she might have full- shut the door beforehand. Right? Yeah. Well, that might have freaked him out, too. Oh, yeah, definitely. I think it was just weird that, hey, Grace Mallory's back. She's dead. Yeah, they killed her off really fast. Yeah, it was just like, yeah, just knock back, hits the wall, dead. Oh, it's on her that she died. Yeah, I'll give yeah. you that. Yeah, I don't think Ryan can bounce back from that. He didn't, he just looked at the body and just ran off. Well, I think he's, at that point, he was still in a state of confusion. Probably. Especially just a kid. I could totally understand Butcher in that situation being like, fuck. I mean, well, yeah, but it's not the, like the first time he killed someone. Yeah, poor Koi. And it's always by pushing them. Yeah. Well, he did kind of kill Stormfront. Oh, I mean, but that one, that was a good kill. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. <laughs> that one was by accident. Yeah, that, that one was out of pure... Well, it was also by accident because it was like... 
and he also killed his mother, but, you know, that... That, that was an accident. <laughs> that was an accident. <laughs> I actually want to talk about Newman's arc, because I think that's very important. Oh, fuck, I forgot about Newman, even though we mentioned her at the beginning of the episode. Yeah. yeah. Like, Newman is so important in this entire thing. Dude, I'm just going to say, Wood. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, wait. I, I, I also need this clarification. I just want to double check again that uh, Newman and Huey are dating in real life. Yes. So she had the watch. Oh, shit. Young kid, boyfriend, whatever. <laughs> yep. Yeah, absolutely. Date. Oh, wow. Hey, man, he's got that nerdy guy Riz in real life. He, Good job, Jack Quaid. Good for them. Good for no? them. They seem like a fun couple. It's hard to see her as a villain. I just think she's just a good person on the wrong side. Oh, yeah. I mean... Yeah, yeah. because I'm used to seeing her in Call of Duty, and she's usually the good, I guess, guy. Wait, what? She's in Call of Duty. Newman? Yeah. The actress? The actress. Oh, yeah, the actress. Wait, wait, which, which Call of Duty? MW, the reboot. Really? She's, um, she goes by Farah, a Middle Eastern um, rebel with her own army. Huh, cool. I didn't know that. Well, I want to yeah. see her in more things because, well, after the end of this show, <laughs> what else could we could say about Newman? Like, I just loved her. Uh, I love her character. In this. Her, so, wait, what, what was it? Boyfriend? Husband? The one with the one leg? What was he? Baby daddy? <laughs> I think, like, yeah. Scientist? Like, yeah, Samir, a.k.a. the guy from The Mandalorian <laughs> who plays the same character. <laughs> <laughs> so dumb. He's still alive, too, apparently, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Which he has one leg. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> but and So he's out there. The uh, Stan Edgar's still out there. So he's probably going to want revenge on Butcher. I don't know. My question is, um, how does her power exactly work? Her power? Shouldn't she, be a- yeah, shouldn't she be able to kill Butcher? Well, her power works off eyesight. Okay, that makes sense. So when the tentacles like wrap around her face, it wrap around her eyes so she can't see what's going on. And then they rip her in half. They also explain more of her character in Gen V. Oh, isn't there going to be like a second season of Gen V? Yeah, so right now, in between the this season and the fifth season of The Boys, we're going to get the second season of Gen V, which is supposed yeah. to show more of the America that we are now in, now that Homelander runs everything. Yeah, because that's what I was hearing, that they're going to have that in between. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of Gen V, though, we get two appearances from characters from Gen V at the end of the season. Sam, Sam and Kate, uh, when they came, kidnapped Frenchie and Kimiko. Yeah, and also the other, I guess, locked individuals. The other heroes from the show. Gen or, V? Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, the, the Stranger Thing girl ripoff, and who else? Oh, no, no, no. The, the, uh, Cindy is not in Gen is V. It? Nope. Oh, no, never mind. No, she was in the boys season. Never mind. She was yeah, in yeah, she season was. two of the boys, and then we just do not yeah, know. No, I don't. No, I just remember. She was just gone for, like, pretty much, like, a whole season. Two seasons, if you count, like, her being at the end of this one. But no, yeah, I was shocked to see Cindy, but also very confused as to why she's on the Vought side of things. Because I was like, yeah, I don't know. If I was kidnapped by Vought and, like, experimented on, I would not want to work with them again. But it's not, it's not really Vought anymore. It's just Homelander. Well, even then, I'm like, why would no? They... Max, would you prefer to be against or with Homelander if you that's, wanted to survive? That's a good point. Oh. But yeah, no, dude, them that whole ending of like Homelander now pretty much runs the United States because uh, they got footage of Bob Singer saying, "Hey, kill Victoria Newman after she died." Now he's arrested. Uh, Senator Calhoun, Speaker of the House is now pretty much president and then basically gives martial law over to Homelander. That is a crazy way to end this season because I've everybody's been like, well, eventually Homelander is going to be president of the show. I'm like, how the fuck would he be president? There's no way that a guy like Kim can just all of a sudden run for president. But then again, you had to look at real life and, <laughs> yep. And then in this show, they're like, well, okay, he's not, he wasn't elected in. He was more just given the power. Yep. Like, that's terrifying. And then all the boys, or like most of the boys, get uh, kidnapped and taken away. MM by 
Love Sausage, uh, Frenchie and Kimiko by Sam and Kate, Huey by Cindy, and then the only ones that really get away are uh, Starlight and Butcher. I mean, I, I kind of find it bogus that she even at least tried to save them. She just fucking ran. Well, well you got to remember they... what power Cindy has. So it was really like, you got to go now. <laughs> They both know they won't win if they fight. Mm-hmm. So might as well take it away. One run and then the other one just live to fight another day. <laughs> Hopefully they don't kill him on the spot. Hopefully. I'm shocked that they didn't. Which honestly, right. it, here's a theory that I kind of want to put out there. Like Now that like Vought had like Homelander basically went down the Tower of Vought and basically killed off people that had any dirt against him. What if this these Vought agents here are actually people like... Wanting to go against Homelander. That'd be interesting. Because now that Homelander is a president, like they're like getting these bo- the boys together and like saying, "You guys, we're gonna give you the funding to go after him." Probably not because Sam and Kate are there, but just a thing I wanted to bring up. I mean, yeah, the only thing, well, at least, what I my theory or counter theory, I should say, is like if they had like the funding of the government. And then to find exactly where they are, it had to be more on Homelander's side. That's true. It was just a thought I had because I was like, well, that'd be pretty interesting if, like, now that Homelander's president. Oh, yeah. That'd be a great, like, twist theory for what could happen. Mm-hmm. I think it's a bad one. I That'd really be a twist to me if that actually were true. Yeah. Just to go more back on what actually happens. Uh, man, color me shocked when I saw that, uh, uh, Kimiko <laughs> spoke. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I'll be honest. I didn't really pay attention to that part. <laughs> really? I I was like, wait I a minute. Like, did oh, she... she spoke, and I forgot she didn't speak. <laughs> I was shocked, I mean, man. I could not believe it. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> I thought she couldn't speak because of something mentally. Well, yeah, but that was like, I guess she broke through. I guess it took another mental scarring to get that out. I mean, at first, remember, she had, she got with Frenchie, technically. Mm-hmm. So that's like a peace moment. So kind of removing that blockage. Mm-hmm. So she could have spoke off screen, to be real. I don't think so. I think the moment she screams no, because the way she does it is like so guttural of like it being forced out of her mouth. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's remember, off screen theory. But yeah, like as soon as she screamed, I'm like, oh. Finally got over that mental block. I thought cool. it was awesome. But it was also like one of those bittersweet things. We're like, oh, good for her. But like, no, Frenchie. But at least to me, because she explained it as more of a mental block. Mm-hmm. It's something she could get over. Yeah. So I wasn't surprised. Okay. But yeah. yeah. That's really all I got to say about this season. I really enjoyed it. I totally understand that it has some problems. It's not my favorite season. I think this is on par for me with like season one. I mean, it's not a bad season, but but compared to the other seasons, it is the weakest one. What about you, Adrian? Um, like I said earlier in the video, my poor ass memory has not helped me in this situation. But I mean, I think even if it's not as good as the others, I think it's a good build up to what the finale will be. Oh, definitely. So I'm not really complaining when I put the pieces together. And put it toward that final season. I think it'll be, I think it'll be fine. Mm-hmm. Won't really be good or bad. I'm just saying in my head, this is the build up to the finale. See where it goes because I think the build up was great. Yeah, I agree with that too. Yep, um, I too. Me too. All right, I guess that's where we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, can't wait to see you guys in the next season. I know we got one more season of Gen V to get through before the next season of The Boys, so. We're definitely going to cover that. Check out our reviews for season three of the boys and our, and our review for this first season of Gen V had a lot of fun covering those. Yeah. That's all I got to really say. Um, you guys want to say your names one more time before we leave? Yeah. This is David. Oh, wait, Clint, it's Adrian. You better like and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's all I got to say. Uh, leave a comment below. Let us know what you think about the, this season. Of the boys, do you agree with more of what I had to say? Do you agree with more of what David or Adrian had to say? Let us know. We would love to have a, very non-political <laughs> conversation in the comments down below. That's not going to happen. It's not. But one can wish. I'll, I'll start the war right now. 
Yep. <laughs> oh, God. I'll comment when this video is posted. All right. Was- well, that's all I got to say. Uh, hope you all have a good day, cunts. Bye.